and welcome to this in-depth tutorial about the Dolby Atmos Composer. In this tutorial, we'll talk about setting up your session, routing, and monitoring. To be able to follow this tutorial, it's necessary that you know what Dolby Atmos is and how it generally works. If you're not up to speed on that yet, please watch our introduction tutorial about Dolby Atmos and the Composer workflow. We'll leave a link in the description. The session setup for Dolby Atmos Composer is really easy. We'll use a Pro Tools session here, but the process is pretty much the same on any other DAW. The Composer plugin usually sits on the master channel since it's the last element in a Dolby Atmos mix. For that reason, you might hear me call it the master channel of your Dolby Atmos mix throughout these videos. Many DAWs have channel limitations and don't natively support multi-channel mixing. In order to get around such limitations and make immersive audio production available to everyone regardless of their DAW, our Dolby Atmos Composer plugin works a little differently than other plugins. The Composer plugin does not receive signals from the track it sits on, but rather has audio sent to it by another plugin we have created called Dolby Atmos Beam. The Beam plugin can be instantiated anywhere in your session and serves as a three-dimensional panner sending both audio and 3D positioning information to the Composer plugin. Some of you may not be aware that we have a 3D reverb called Spacelab. Well, from version 1.5 onwards, Spacelab can connect to our Composer plugin the same way Beam does. This is a totally free update to existing owners, so if you use Spacelab, be sure to update. And if you don't use Spacelab yet, visit our website to find out more. It's a brilliant product for anyone working with 3D audio. Any experienced mixer will tell you that mixes can be structured in a thousand ways. There might be cases where, for whatever reason, you need to put the composer on a track that is not the master channel. If this applies to you, you'll need to make sure that all tracks with Beam or Spacelab plugins on them are routed to the track with the composer plugin. By this I mean you can either route the track's output to the composer track, or have a send effect routed there at 0 dB. By doing this, you make sure that all instances of Beam and Spacelab are processed before the Composer plugin, and all your audio signals arrive there in sync. Some hosts turn off audio processing for plugins when they think that nothing is happening on the channel where a plugin is instantiated. For example, this can happen when no audio is arriving at the channel where the Composer plugin is instantiated, and so the host switches off the plugin. Our Composer, Beam, and Spacelab plugins detect if this has happened and display a warning. Whenever you instantiate a Beam or Spacelab plugin, it automatically connects to the Composer plugin if it is present in your session. The Beam or Spacelab plugins appear in the Composer plugins connections list on the left. You can manually disconnect them in case you want to exclude them from your Dolby Atmos mix. For example, if you want to export different versions of your mix with different instruments or vocals. As a convenience, we have included Open Beam and Open Spacelab buttons, so you can open any instance of those plugins directly from the Composer plugin. This way you don't have to search through the mixer of your DAW to find the right plugin. Our Dolby Atmos Composer automatically compensates for track latencies that tend to happen when you use different plugins in your session with varying latencies. Currently, the only known exception is Pro Tools, which has a bug where the wrong position is communicated to the plugin. Once Avid fixes this bug, we will publish an update with which automatic delay compensation will also work with Pro Tools. For now, there's an option in the About screen of the Beam, as well as in Spacelab, where the user can set the latency correction value manually. For more information about what to type here, please check out our short tutorial on delay compensation in Pro Tools. It's good practice to have all your instances named so that you can easily identify them as you mix. When you instantiate a Beam plugin on any track, Beam adopts the name of the track if the DAW communicates that information to the plugin, but you can change it manually in the Composer plugin as shown here. Or you can do that in Beam. Or in Spacelab. All name changes are communicated to all plugins, so you only have to make the change once. The rows of Spacelab instances show sources inside Spacelab along with their names. The source names can be changed in Spacelab, 
please check our Spacelab tutorials to learn more about Spacelab. For monitoring, you can mute or solo each instance, and if you're using Spacelab, you can also mute or solo each of its sources. The unmute button at the top of the connections list unmutes all instances. If Spacelab is present, all of its sources are also unmuted. And as you would expect, the unsolo button unsolos everything. Our Composer plugin maintains the order of the instances in the connections list, and this order is initially determined by the order in which the Beam or Spacelab plugins have been recognized by the Composer. You can manually change the order in two ways. The first way is to use the up and down arrows for moving the selected instances one line up or down. Let's select some instances which are not consecutive. When I click on the up arrow, the selection becomes consecutive. It's now ordered below the first selected instance, which now moves up one row. The same thing happens when clicking the down arrow, just that now the whole selection moves one row down. The second way of changing the order is to double click on the row number of any selected instance and type in the target row number where you would like to move your instances. As you can see, the selected instances that were not in consecutive order before are now consecutive, and the first of them is where we wanted to be. If you have a lot of connected instances, it can be hard to find a specific item. To help with this, we've included a search function at the top left corner of the connections list. Just type a part of the name into this field and all non-matching rows will go dark. Now you can scroll through and easily find the instance that you are looking for. If you're a Logic Pro user, there is one thing I should mention that is specific to this DAW. The newest versions of Logic load projects in a different way that leaves plugins unloaded. This lets you see the song window very quickly. However, this means that you have to manually click on the not yet loaded Beam plugins to activate them and make them connect again to the Composer plugin after loading the project. This can be a bit of a pain and can scramble your instance order when saving the session with some plugins not yet loaded because the Composer thinks that they have been removed by the user. We recommend that you switch this feature off, which makes loading your projects a bit slower, but the connections are all recalled instantly without having to do anything manually. You'll have to do this for each project separately under File, Project Settings, General. And once there, just deactivate the only load plugins needed for project playback option and save your project. As we have mentioned in earlier videos, Dolby Atmos has bed channels and dynamic objects. We refer to bed channels as composites in our plugin since our system can go beyond the limitations of the Dolby Atmos spec, which only goes up to a 7.1.2 layout. In the Essentials version of the Composer plugin, you can select other layouts with more speakers as a composite by using the selector in the Input Channels section. In the full version of the Composer plugin, you can select them individually for each connected instance. Beam can have a layout up to 9.1.6. And with Spacelab, well, you're only limited by your imagination. As you can see, when we select different composite layouts for our various connections, these different layouts all combine into one big composite inside the Composer plugin. Each individual instance only uses the channels it needs based on its own composite layout selection. This way, the available channels are used in the most optimal way. In the current composite, which has an orange border, you can see that the first 10 channels have orange numbers, while the rest have blue numbers. Technically, the first 10 channels are the Dolby Atmos bed. The rest are dynamic objects that are placed at the positions of the virtual speakers belonging to the composite, which cannot be covered by the standard bed channels. When you import an ADM BWF file created with the Dolby Atmos composer into the composer again, or into any other renderer like one of the Dolby Atmos production suite, you will see the first 10 channels as bed and the rest of the composite as simple dynamic objects. If you want the channels of a Beam plugin not to be placed and panned onto the composite, but to appear as separate dynamic objects, you can switch the Beam to Object Mode using the Composite Selector for that Beam in the full version. Or you can click the Object button if you have the essential version of our plugin. Similarly, you can switch any of the Spacelab sources to Object Mode. 
When you do this, these objects become available as dynamic objects. You can see in their name fields, the object numbers are shown on the right. When a Spacelab source is in object mode, the reverb portion is mixed to the composite while the dry sound comes in as dynamic objects. In the full version of Dolby Atmos Composer, there is an option in the input channel section which lets you enforce the use of a 7.1.2 bed independently of the format selected as composite because some distributors require the use of a 7.1.2 bed. The channels of the enforced bed that are not used by the composite do not appear graphically in the input channel section. However, when importing a Dolby Atmos file created in such a way, the 7.1.2 bed will, of course, be visible and the channels not used by the composite will simply be silent. The output side of Dolby Atmos Composer is extremely flexible and allows you to monitor in binaural and or multi-channel formats on any DAW. This is achieved by either instantiating the composer on an appropriate multi-channel track if your DAW supports it, or by using the external output of the composer plugin. Here you can select any of the available audio interfaces on your system and thereby circumvent the output limitations of your DAW completely. We recommend using the same audio interface with your DAW that you plan to use for the external output of the Dolby Atmos composer. This helps avoid timing drift and audio dropouts between different devices. If you must use multiple audio interfaces, you'll have to use word clock or some other means to tightly synchronize the clocks of the different audio devices. Now keep in mind that some drivers do weird things, which means that this feature may not work with some audio devices. Upon selecting an external audio interface, the external output buffer size is set to the buffer size at which the interface is operating. That said, it is possible to change this in case you need to set it to a different value. For example, you may need to match the buffer size used by your DAW. In the essential version of the plugin, you can monitor only one path at a time, either speakers or headphones. You can select it from the monitoring drop menu. In the full version of the plugin, you can select any monitoring speaker format or switch it off in case you want to monitor on headphones. While you're doing this, you can also select if you want to monitor over headphones either in stereo or in binaural. If both speaker layout and headphone layout is selected, the speaker channels will appear first when looking at the channel order followed by the headphone channels. If the Composer plugin is instantiated on a multi-channel track and the monitoring speaker layout matches the track format, the channels are output in the order prescribed by the plugin type, be it VST3, audio unit, or AAX. Keep in mind that some hosts reorder channels outside of any standard. If the DAW hasn't done this, then the channel order will be the one visible in the channel names below the channel meters. It will be like this for the external output as well. In the full version of the plugin, above the speaker's dropdown, you'll find different convenience controls for monitoring like volume control, a dim switch for reducing monitoring volume by 12 dB, and mute buttons. In the monitoring section, you will find another dropdown where you can select a personalized HRTF. HRTF stands for Head Related Transfer Function and basically describes how sounds coming from different directions should sound when they reach your ears based on the acoustical properties of your head. By using the PHRTF Creator app from Dolby, you can create your own personal HRTF file and use it in the Composer plugin to augment your binaural monitoring experience. But keep in mind that other people do not have your PHRTF. So be sure to perform a quality check without using any PHRTF. Please refer to our manual to see what folder you need to place your PHRTF file. On the bottom of the full version of the plugin, you'll find the loudness measurement section. With the drop down, you can decide if you want to measure the loudness when playing back your mix, and if so, which format, be it stereo or 5.0, should be used to make the measurement. The reset button resets the entire measurement. To be a team, we see the dream to many others. You picked your battles wrong. I'm not the one you should be after. Why feel superior to someone who has been there for you? I've pulled you through a woo with all that I could do, but I'm not here to lick your wounds. 
Of the five values shown, integrated loudness and true peak are the most important. The integrated loudness must be calibrated to a certain target value a distributor may require you to match before they accept delivery. The true peak value shows you if there is any level overshoot. Since the Essential version does not offer loudness measurement, you would have to use another plugin to do this. Some DAWs may offer this functionality. Of course, you can also upgrade to the full version if you like. In the Dolby Atmos Composer Essential plugin, you'll find other controls in the output settings section that we have not described in this video. We'll go over those functions in other tutorials since they are not directly related to monitoring. And that's it for setup, routing, and monitoring with the Dolby Atmos Composer plugin. If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and check out our other tutorials about Dolby Atmos Composer. Subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to not miss our news, tips, and updates. There's more on the way, so I'll see you in the next one.